Okay, welcome back to the Rad High Rocks podcast. Today, we're really lucky to have Lauren Smith with us. She is a sports presenter that you may have seen um, presenting the live High Rocks Elite 15 races. Um, we wanted to know a little bit more about her, where she came from, what her background is. So we've asked her to join us today. She's presented everything from the CrossFit Games. She's been a Red Bull presenter. She's presented rugby, rowing. She's a co-owner of Vale CrossFit. And she has done High Rocks, three lots of High Rocks races, two solo in the open category and a relay. So it's going to be an awesome chat today, Laura. Um, Lauren, sorry. <laughs> oh my how God, you'd be you amazed doing? how much that happens. Does it? <laughs> it's my writing, actually. Someone called um, me Liz sorry. today. <laughs> Lauren. I was like, I'm definitely not a Liz. <laughs> we will stick to Lauren. How's it going? Thanks yeah. for joining us. Oh, thank you guys for having me. This is going to be fun. Um, I'm really good. I have trained today. I've tidied my house today and I have had a new job come into my inbox today. So everything is going well. It's a good day. Very good day. I like that. Positive start. <laughs> um, so we wanted to take it right back to your star. And um, as a child, have you always been into sport growing up? Is it something you found later in life or from the beginning? Take us back to that. Oh, no, I am. I am your full blown sporty kid played every single sport all my life. Love sport. Um, it started with like kind of your usual, you do netball, you do hockey, you do athletics in the summer. Yeah. Um, and then I found horses and I was really into horse riding. I remember like being, <laughs> I think I was around 10 to 12. And at the age of 12, my mum and dad, both doctors work big hours, would drop me at the horse stables where I worked <laughs> and spent 12 hours a day mucking out horse stalls to take out a horse for one hour as part of a hack. And I did that. That sounds years. very similar to, to my upbringing. Yeah. I feel like, yeah. It Same teaches thing. you things though, doesn't it? Like yeah, how to totally. look after things, responsibility, and it keeps you active. Yeah, hundred percent. It's a it's a good start into yeah how to be slightly more responsible and help look after something at a young age. But um, no, I was exactly the same. I've got and one question sports. for you, and yeah, it's whether you'll admit it on air. When it was the middle of winter, how did you keep warm? How did I keep warm? When you're on the yard. It's oh, always the know. middle of winter here. We live in <laughs> North Scotland, like <laughs> Aberdeenshire. Yeah, I don't know. I just dressed. With lots of clothes. On. Okay, then I'm not admitting what we did. <laughs> no, I mean, is this a trick question? <laughs> um, I'm quite like, intrigued now. You Come used on. to bury your feet in the muck heap to keep your feet warm. You'd wear horse rugs. <laughs> oh, like, really? Yeah, you know, it's really cold. Yeah, like you can put, put a horse rug or a numb around you, but I, I'm not sure about the horse rug. I don't actually think I can admit to doing that. There's only one way to keep your feet warm, like in the middle of winter <laughs> when you're 12 to 14. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Okay. So after the horses, then I know you found CrossFit. What was that? Yeah. So that was a bit later. That was after university. So like horses got me through to like 16 or so. And through that time I used to do volleyball and cheerleading. Those were my two main sports. Or, sorry, oh, volleyball cool. and gymnastics at school. Went to uni that transferred to cheerleading. And then when I came out of all of those team sports, I... I don't know. I felt like I'd lost something. I wasn't, I used to train four hours a night, every single night, even though it was kind of like semi-amateur county level, it was never anything amazing. Um, and I was working as an intern for the Cardiff Blues rugby team. And one of their former players had just opened this gym and I was like, oh, I'll just go to this gym then see if I can keep training in some capacity. And it turned out it was a CrossFit gym. And at that time I didn't know much about like kind of the elite level of the sport or anything about that. I just fell in love with training and going to hang out with my best mates and like the byproduct was getting fitter and we yeah, just had okay. this lovely period of early 20s where we would train and would go for brunch and then maybe we'd go for a night out then we'd train again would go to brunch you know it was just like it was a really lovely period of my life where I fell in love with CrossFit oh that's perfect it wasn't particularly um like I was never very good I'm still not very good you know, but like I, I consider myself the complete amateur athlete. I do it because I love it. I'm never going to stop training. And it's given me like a lifestyle that I'm quite proud to be a part of. Yeah, 100 percent. And that's part of CrossFit and High Rocks, isn't it? That's what yeah, they're trying to create 100%. the community. And like you don't have to. You've obviously got the elite level of the sport, but it doesn't mean just because you're not elite, you can't go and train. Like most of us are all just going and joining in. Obviously, the Open's just started. Um 
so everyone's getting joined in into that and given that a go but that's not everyone hoping to get to the crossfit games like no. most people know they're never going to get to the crossfit games but it doesn't stop people joining in the open I know completely. It's the nicest thing about this sport is it's community engagement at grassroots level. And, you know, High Rocks has the same thing. But um, the fact that, you know, anyone like the 71 year old granny, we've got plenty of athletes who are 60 to 70 in our gym who will turn up. Some of them will do RX because they're, you know, absolute animals. You know, but some that of them will be ninja. just doing scaled versions and but the idea of coming into a building and testing yourself where someone's judging you, you're like in a bit of a pressure cooker, but it's all surrounded by friends. I think that's amazing that that exists on such a global scale. And then people enjoy beating what they did the year before, seeing regular improvement and progression. Mm. It's it's so amazing that like these things exist for people outside of the elite sphere. Yeah, and it's nice to have that competition against yourself as well. I think that's why people like high rocks I, I guess a lot because you know you you turn up well, well depending on whether you're doing it in doubles or solos you're still trying to like beat that last time and see if you can improve on a certain station or you've got that like your competitiveness but it doesn't always have to be against everyone else it can just be against yourself and your times yeah completely agree and I think that's what keeps me going back because I am not a runner like that is that is <laughs> not my thing um but the reason I keep going back and doing opens is because every time I see myself get a little bit better and I'm like oh my running's getting better this is great like I don't like in CrossFit I don't see that many improvements anymore like I've been doing yeah. it for 12 years you know if I make an improvement it's like 0.02 kilograms mm -hmm. on a lift mm -hmm. but in my running I'm suddenly starting to see these leaps and bounds and I don't think I'd ever have even started doing it if it wasn't for high rocks well, that's that's really cool, though, isn't it? It started, and I think is that the same for quite a few CrossFitters. Like the the crossover from CrossFit to High Rocks, I'm guessing is very much the strength because most CrossFitters. I mean, we train in a lot of CrossFit gyms because we travel, and most CrossFitters don't like the runs, or they'll run you know, no 400 likes, meters. Who likes the runs? <laughs> like, yeah, but coming from like a bit more of a running background, we quite like the the running stuff, like side of it but the high rocks crossover for crossfitters seems to be that they are very like good at the exercise side and then they're all making massive improvements in the running because maybe they haven't concentrated on that discipline as much but they are now for high rocks yeah 100 percent. and i think like because we go into say an open high rocks and the weights are less than what we would train daily in the gym so mm. that becomes the period where we can catch our breath and lower our heart rate yeah um, and what it's done is it's found like a space and I, I can't speak for anyone, but there are a couple of CrossFit athletes who are elite high rocks athletes. And they have found a space where they can exist, where they might not be the strongest person out there, but very good from an endurance base. And yeah. suddenly they're exceptional at high rocks. Mm. Yeah, for sure. It's, um, yeah, it's whereas they might struggle to get past, say, quarterfinals, semifinals and CrossFit because of their top strength numbers, just not not being where the standard is for the elite level. Yeah, for, for sure. I can see I can see that. And like even even just in the women's field, you see so many um, like CrossFit athletes that have come like they've trained. Cross I think it's only like Meg Jacoby was saying the other day I was listening to a CrossFit um, to a podcast with her and she was saying, God, I look around and I'm like the only one that's not a CrossFitter. It's like it's quite yeah, interesting. No, there's that such a. Lauren Weeks yeah. is a three times regionals athlete. She was yes. an, like, she still is an absolute beast of a CrossFitter. Miriam Van Roor, who is last year's European champion. She's just won the 24.1 Open. Yeah, like, I know. Like out of the world. Like, right, yeah. That is in like 5.37 or something. Like, yeah, like, something three, absolutely ridiculous. Oh, it's incredible time. It's like half like, why I did. I know. I mean, she must be good on the burpee board. Yeah, oh, say. she's, yeah. <laughs> um, you know, and what is proving is that CrossFit being like a methodology can be applied to many different things. And when you narrow in on what your thing is, it's kind of, it's useful across the board, whether that's CrossFit, weightlifting or running a high rocks race. Yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent. So then, uh, go on, sorry, I'm gone. No, I was going to say, how did you find high rocks? Was it the presenting side first or was it the racing side first? Or how, how did you kind of get into the world of high rocks? I can't remember the specifics, but it was, it came onto my radar in around 2018, 2019. And I was like, oh, a new functional fitness race. And at the time I was doing a functional fitness based podcast, not specific to CrossFit, just generally. Um, 
and I reached out to them and I was like, oh, I'd be really interested in finding out more about you guys. Is it possible if I could do a podcast with someone? And they give me, um, they were like, yeah, you can do it with our founder, um, <laughs> Maurice Fiesta. I was like, great. So I podcasted with Mo, who is now my boss, incidentally. Uh, he does not remember this, I don't think. And um, and like, basically it was like a what is Hyrox? And that was 2019 and then the world shut down. And they yeah. never ended up coming to England for another two, three years. Um, and then the actual reason I'm in High Rocks now is because I was at Waterpalooza um, hanging out with my CrossFit fam. And yeah. I was introduced to Douglas, who is the managing director and lives over in America. And we took him to his first ever CrossFit workout. Um, and he oh, told cool. me the other day that it would be his last CrossFit <laughs> workout. <laughs> <laughs> um and then Douglas um I think put my name forward having had a few chats with me and then there was a few kind of chats online with the team and that's how I ended up in properly as opposed to just podcasting with everybody oh, oh that's course. so cool so did yeah, you no. present yeah. a race before you raced a race no in fact yeah. that was what was really good about high rocks were like and I, I actually find this true with a lot of sports like this should be the norm is like we want you to understand what it's like to be out there you know, you so can't we're gonna come make and, you suffer. <laughs> yeah, you can't come and present our sport without being out there. And they were like, "What race do you want to enter?" And I was like, "The Open." They were like, "Are, are you sure?" <laughs> and I was like, "Yeah, yeah, yeah." So uh, London was coming up, so I jumped in my car. I drove three hours to London by myself. I hung out all day and like got to got the vibe and chatted to the people and and then I ran and then I jumped back in my car and I drove home. And I was no. like, "That was that was." Honestly, it sounds really stupid because I was by myself and it wasn't like the traditional experience, but I came away and I'm so bad at running. Honestly, I struggled so much. When I finished, I was like, I achieved something. Like, yeah. I genuinely feel like I achieved like something massive in my own personal fitness journey just by running that race on like with no notice and no training. <laughs> I mean, that's impressive, isn't it? And I think that just shows that like people can turn up and you can do it if you have a certain level of fitness. I think you need the background fitness, otherwise yeah. you might really like, you know, regret Hurt yourself. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You'll get to the burpee broad jumps like yeah. me and there will be regret. <laughs> and you kind of need to know that you need to like sit on a rower and pull a pull a handle and like probably what a ski machine is so you don't turn up there and not oh. know what to do. You probably need a base, but like once you have a base, most people can go out there and just chip away at it and, and yeah. get to the end and get their first like I, I see it really like a half marathon. You yeah. know, you can, you can enter and you can just chip, do it at your own pace, do your mm -hmm. own thing. I mean, I don't know whether I should admit this, I'm, um, but I got to the ski erg and like, I don't know whether my brain just went or I hadn't quite infiltrated what we were doing, but I was pulling, I was pulling probably a way too fast a pace because I went off like a rocket as I did. <laughs> and I look at the photographer, it, was, it wasn't even a judge. I was like, mate, how many meters are we doing? <laughs> shit yeah because it comes yeah, you're, like, you're doing a thousand down. i'm like yeah. thanks and then you look down and it's only at 200 and yeah. you're like oh no nah. <laughs> oh that is so good i know Love a little that. bit more nowadays i'm a little bit <laughs> i'm a little bit more involved yeah you're not like presenting the elite 15 going hey how, how, how yeah how many, many meters they doing? how many meters are they doing <laughs> um so, so how, how oh go on how was washington no, no. Oh, DC was epic. Um, yeah, because you've just come up, you just back a couple of yeah. days, you just said from that. Yeah, back a couple of days. Um, DC, it finally felt like everything we've been trying to achieve with the live stream and kind of the representation of the sport is like finally kind of coming together. Don't get me wrong, we're by no means the finished product at all. Mm -hmm. And there are still little things to work on, but it's like all of these, I, I don't think people quite appreciate how hard it is to do live television if you're not yeah, in it yeah. you like I don't I think people just think it just happens but like mm -hmm. there's so many moving parts and different things and it felt like DC it finally was starting to work especially mm -hmm. when working in America especially as a European crew comes with its own unique set of challenges and yeah. um, so yeah we were buzzing after DC that was a it was a really great show and the racing was just phenomenal yeah. Like it was just, it was great racing and yeah. that's all you can ask for really. Oh, a hundred percent. And I think just for anyone that follows High Rocks, I know it's still quite early as a sport, but the fact that you guys can put on a live stream of these races and people can watch it on the TV, like you would watch a rugby match or a football match or something. It is like just incredible to be able to watch the top end of the sport and just see like, it, I don't know. It's like something to tune into, to get excited about, to, to, 
to watch and see the athletes really push. And even if you if you've done it a little bit, but you want to try and improve your own race, you're kind of watching to see like, for example, the sled push. How do they push it? Do they yeah. go straight arms? Do they bend their arms? Like, do they take a break? Do they not? And you, yeah. if they're all taking a break, you're like, well, why the hell am I like flinging a sled like from one end to the other? If you know all the elites are taking a break halfway, maybe there's something to that that then people can put into their own race. So it's awesome to be able to have the opportunity to watch it. Honestly, I can I completely agree. It changed how I approach the sleds entirely because I, you know, I'm very mm. kind of bull headed, straight arm, straight back, just work mm. like the legs, destroy the hamstrings. But then watching them, I completely changed tack for my second race. Yeah, and you know, brought it to my shoulders and broke a little bit more often. And um, I do think there's a lot to be said for watching and speaking to the elites because also we've got to remember the amount of people racing here. They're not all. They don't all have coaches. No. You know, they or they have coaches for other disciplines. So mm-hmm. actually watching how the elite level do it and and comparatively how good they are when you look at the times, mm, you know, but 100%. seeing it is slightly different from seeing a time on the like on a piece of paper to yeah. know that those elite women are running 20 minutes to th- 25 minutes faster than me. Like, I know. Yeah, it's, it's so mind blowing, isn't it? absolutely yeah, mind blowing. it is the running it, i mean it's a it's a running game isn't it a lot of it it's crazy and and everyone's been like you can tell really working on their running i think like people have been speaking about it a lot um but for your high rocks you said obviously you worked on your running a bit more as well what what about the the highs and lows of your journey have you found anything like particularly difficult did you did you enjoy the relay? I think you said you did as well yeah. as the open or would you consider doing a doubles or what What have been the highs and lows of your high rock so far? Honestly, not many lows just yet. I'm always going to struggle with every broad jumps because um, cause my running is the hard bit. There's just no space to get your heart rate back mm. down. Oh yeah, so, I mean, it's, it is grim, isn't it? Yeah. And honestly, time. I struggled at 24.1 as well. Like the constant repetition, high volume burpee is Mm. clearly an area I need to work on but it's still not like a down it's like it's just it's cool to know the holes in your game I don't ever like I'm I'm not elite enough to worry overly worry about personal performance in that regard but highs there's just been hundreds of them because running my first one I absolutely adored out of nowhere I just loved it way more than I ever thought I would running the second one I um I was in DC and it was interesting, not DC, Chicago. And I was interested because actually I found it a lot harder than the first one. And that could have been because we broadcast and then I'd not eaten. And then I tried to run at the end of the day. And, you know, <laughs> yeah. like it wasn't exactly genius preparation plus the jet lag, but it was interesting to see how that like changed my approach. And then the relay was great because it was Vienna. Um, I was hanging out with Antonia Kotolinski. She's going to kill me for saying her second name wrong. Um, <laughs> she heads up Scandinavia, but she's a CrossFit Games athlete. That, so we oh, know wow. each other through CrossFit. And then we had um, Levy, who was like one of the new starters in the marketing team. And then we were just without a, a fourth man. So oh, we just went into the crowd and just found a fourth huh? man 20 minutes before the race. Love and it. it turned out he was an absolute machine. <laughs> and he was like a champion, uh, a world champion, masters athlete multiple oh, wow. times. And he was like, oh, yeah. We were like, can you do the burpees for us? And he was like, yeah, I'll do the burpees. He won it. He oh won the God. burpees. And he came legend. second with unbroken warbles. We were like, who is this guy? He's amazing. <laughs> anyway. <Sign him> up. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, so that was a great experience because A, I quite like that one. It's a power workout rather than uh rather than an endurance one, you know, mm-hmm. you sprint a kilometer and then you hope you can hang on for your fitness like element. Mm-hmm. Um, so I really enjoyed that kind of strategy that came with all of that. Albeit 20 what... minutes is not quite enough time to really develop a strategy. We kind of yes. just got stuck in. <laughs> and but what 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 um disciplines did you do? What, I did. Did you get I... to choose or were you left with no, something? Because it's... we um I did sled pull and I did uh lunging and I would oh, never wow. have sled pull fine. I probably wouldn't have put myself forward for lunging. I think my they die out faster than some. I probably would have chosen war balls. But now, obviously, when we went unbroken, I was like, I'm so glad I didn't. The pressure yeah, to yeah. go unbroken <laughs> would have been massive. Um, or I would have chosen um, the ergs because that's stuff that I'm comfortable with. Yeah, you know, that's stuff 100%. that I train every day at home. Yeah. Um, should I train lunges every day at home? 
probably but yeah I mean lunges and burpees I think if people just did them a bit more like you'd probably be happy with them but they're the two that I definitely don't like as much but exactly yeah exactly I I basically said as long as I'm not on burpees like yeah put me where you need me you know use the strengths of you know the CrossFit Games athletes the the Masters world champ Use yeah. their strengths where yeah. they're strongest. <laughs> Even I was like, and you guys can carry me to the podium, yeah, which is fair which what happened. <laughs> <laughs> and what about future rates? Have you got any on the horizon? I mean, your schedule is probably insane, so maybe you don't know just yet. But is there are there any high rocks races booked in? Yeah, so hopefully it depends what my job is on the day, but hopefully I'll run in Copenhagen, um, oh, in a couple oh, of weeks. Cool. And then um, maybe Cologne. Well, I'm just gonna see how oh, it goes. Oh, cool. So yeah, we'll we'll just play it by ear. I'm I'm not I'm not one for putting it in in advance because the brutal reality of my job is that yeah. if a job comes in, like I have to drop everything I'm doing socially because yeah. I can't afford to not take work. So I'm always a little bit apprehensive about like really like doing loads of stuff in advance. But I'd like to think I will race a couple of times before the end of the year in the world championships oh, that's which isn't right. really the end of the year i'm not totally sure when the end of the year is because it's so all year round yeah it seems to be like getting to a point now where you're like going, going round like annually but the world champs are now in june so you're like yeah we'll call the, the season, we'll call it june like, we'll call the june. end of the season june for the moment i and will get you... that confirmed before our next broadcast yeah yeah <laughs> and are you um presenting at the world champs is it going to be a live yes. stream there yeah i will and... be yeah yeah i'm really excited about that that was my first job this time a year and a half ago so okay. I got brought in to do the world championships and the, the amount that the broadcast and everything's moved on. I'm so excited to do it again, but bigger, but better. Bigger and better. Yeah, yeah, it's going to be really cool. And Nice looks like a really cool place to do it. I've done some mountain bike racing and stuff around there and it's it's such a cool city to finish. Like, because it's like city and sea and yeah, there's so beautiful. much going on. It's what a cool place to choose to do it. And I think Purple, the Ironman world. Tell me about your mountain bike racing. Oh, just I just used to do some like um, enduro mountain bike racing, like um, kind of downhill casual. with. No, no, casual. I know what enduro is. You're all good. Okay, yeah. So like um, the enduro world series and like the Trans Provence and big like big days. How did I not know that? Yeah. Where like do you still do that? No, don't do it now. No. I did it like well, probably finished like maybe like eight years ago, nine years. Oh, ago okay, now. so it was before yeah. like the current ESO. Before everything that's been going yeah. on, yeah, yeah, but like like good times and like awesome places to race like obviously the Europeans are just brilliant at like putting on races and one of the best ones I ever did was through Provence and it finished in uh, Nice it was like a six-day race um it's like incredible yeah so it's a good it's a good place to finish ride your bike into the sea oh my gosh uh, yes yeah yeah. winning you know when um downhill used to go to um Lusange in Croatia yeah and you'd finish in the harbor next to the water yeah I mean I never I I never um yeah I know exactly I mean, you'll love. We've done a, we've done a, we've done an episode with a girl called uh, Becky Skelton. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you heard of Becky, but she's like a huge downhill mountain biker and has raced in a few downhill, um, like World Cups, like worldwide. So we were talking to her about the pressure of that and starting in the start gate, going beep, 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 and then now high rocks and being there. And it's like, yeah, it's quite interesting seeing the switch. But there's there's loads of people, which I think is really interesting coming from different sports to try. High yeah. Rocks. Cycling's massive. I, think... I haven't, I haven't met a lot of mountain bikers, but I, okay. there's a lot of roadies um, and there? triathletes. That transition is clearly much more natural for people. I think just of the endurance, the, the, the endurance element. Yeah. Yeah. Whereas... Um, sorry, go on. No, no. Ati. Who was the, the guy in um, the Ironman? He did like an, he does an eight hour Ironman. He came like, did he come third in the uh, men's Palio, Palio, Palio. Yeah. What a Fernando. nice guy. He seems oh, like I know. he was so lovely. But yeah, like what a ninja. I mean, if he can do an eight hour Ironman, it's nothing to him, is it? It's like Yeah. And in Chicago, um, we had an athlete called Rylan Shadeg, and his background is cross country racing. Um okay. and that's like how he largely how he still trains. No, no, running. mountain bike. Mount- oh, mount- oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Sorry, my um my former life was the presenter for Red Bull's mountain biking. So that's where oh, the interest okay. comes from. Yeah, and actually, you. we used to have the most incredible team. We traveled the world together. This is before Eurosport took it over. But we we traveled the world together and we reported on cross country and downhill mountain biking. And like, I spent more time on the road with these guys than I did at home with my husband. Like it was a <laughs> family on the road. And we were all pretty heartbroken when the contract got taken away. And that was only two years ago. 
Yeah. Um, and I finally feel through High Rocks, like I have found that same kind of broadcasting family. Oh, that's nice. And it's so nice to have finally like found something again that gets me like, I don't know, so excited to go back out on the road with people. Like we're a tiny team. I think yeah. there's like, there's like six of us, <laughs> but like, it's just so lush, you know. It just seems like a really nice like feel I think like from everyone we follow or we've spoken to so like even with like Faisal and Gus and yeah um, they're good dudes like everyone just seems to get on really well and like you see everyone like go to the you know Nat Boyle like, we follow her on um, Instagram and had a few chats with her and she just everyone seems to really enjoy it like it's obviously hard work putting these massive epic events on but everyone seems to be smiling and having a bit of fun it just seems like a really nice team yeah and they're such a young team I think I'm one of the oldest oh really oh, yeah. God. <laughs> but no it's um it, they, what they all achieve is amazing for the amount of people that they are hmm. they have created something so special yeah incredible I think I think High Rocks in general has just created that community feel though from yeah. people that are racing like elite level to people that are just coming in and doing their first race like uh, we train a few people to um do them and everyone's always said they've come back from it feeling like so welcomed and not like intimidated at all like everyone's been all the judges all the assistants everyone's just been really really welcoming so it doesn't seem like a scary thing to start like to get involved in which is really nice I think for such a new sport yeah it's quite empowering I think I've got um my uh my two um members from my gym both doctors both in their like 60s and they ran their first race in Glasgow having trained for it for a couple of months with us and now they've signed up to volunteer in like all of the British oh. ones oh that's so which cool. is yeah it's lush it's so nice um and then they'll race again um out in Berlin I think in a couple of in a month's time oh, yeah, yeah I don't think I've really spoken to anyone that's done a race and then has said that they wouldn't do another and they wouldn't yeah. race again like everyone seems to kind of get, like dip their toe in and then kind of get hooked and think well yeah I definitely it's would the want beating to go back. time thing it's like how can I get better yeah it's all it's, measured it's like, yeah. really, you, you can see your splits it? it's great yeah. yeah so on on that note then what's your top tips do you have we say three but I mean Faye had about 20 so it's like <laughs> you can you can have one two ten do you have any tips for racing high rocks for, for people. I'm not I'm not even going to embarrass myself by giving you physical let's race tips <laughs> <laughs> because like you should be talking to the elite level athletes for those but <laughs> if I was to talk to you about trying it for the first time yes. I think the first one is don't be nervous because it's a really welcoming community from all over the world, from all walks of life, every single age group you can possibly imagine. Yeah. There is mm -hmm. a place for absolutely everyone in High Rocks. Um, and everyone is open and lovely and sweet. And we all are going through the same thing. Very similar to like what I say to people about the CrossFit Open. We're all in our own way going through exactly the same emotional roller coaster. Yeah. Um totally. the second one would be um in don't go out like a rocket. <laughs> Based on personal says, experience, that doesn't go well. <laughs> and everyone says to everyone doing any race ever. Like, yeah, and is, you always do, regardless. Yeah, exactly. 100%. <laughs> like, this, this is an hour and 20 to, like, for yeah. most of us, long race. There's plenty of time. Yeah. Don't kill yourself in the first few laps. Um, and the third one would be, if you're planning on booking a race, just press the button, get it done. There's yeah. so many versions as well. You don't have to do, if you just don't want to do open, if that seems like too much, grab your best mate um, and go do doubles yeah. and yeah. help yourself, like help each other through it um, or go and get four of you and make it a fun relay. And quite honestly, a lot of, of high rocks I feel is it's really not about winning at all. It's about the process right. and finding enjoyment in the process of where you are as an athlete and how you can improve. Yeah. Plus the general fun on the day. Like yeah, it's, 100%. it doesn't need to be this big, scary kind of challenge for you to have to overcome. Enjoy the process of finding out where you are in relation to said challenge and how you can improve in it. Yeah, yeah totally. I think it's really nice as well that like when you're 
racing like I think we spoke about this um on another episode as well but you you don't necessarily know where you are in the pack either like, no you have no so idea what, yeah so you're just kind of like you can you can use someone in front of you if you want to try and like make, make yourself run faster or keep up with them but like everyone everyone kind of just goes into one big pool and you're all just kind of in it together yeah. but you but you're not competing against each other and then once you finish mm-hmm. you can go and start cheering people on doing wall balls. like it's really a cool like event for not feeling like you're like lining up with everyone and like there's going to be someone left behind yeah totally agree you don't you never feel like you're left behind because everyone's in different Mm. stages of their own race and so often like you'll be on your first kind of like round and you'll be running up to someone on their like fifth who's like dying and sweaty and you'll be like come on let's go yeah we can do this together (laughs) or you feel really good about yourself because you're on like your fourth lap and you're thinking, oh God, I'm doing quite well. And that person looks like they're dying. And then they go into the war ball station. You're like, oh, yeah, that's like, because oh, they're, they're at the end. <laughs> I thought I was doing really well. I felt really fresh. <laughs> no, 100%. Yeah. I mean, I'm not going to lie. I've definitely had someone fresher than me come past me while I'm like, oh, oh I know. Oh. And they're like, go on, Laura. And you're like, I'm dying. <laughs> <laughs> so true so true um and then what about we we try and touch on mental strength as well like do you do you think high rocks is more physical game mental game bit of both I think every sport is completely a mental game in every capacity I think quite often skill sets at the top level are fairly similar give or take you know Mm -hmm. but you know everyone's training hard to do exactly what they need to do on the day and quite often especially in the sports I'm a part of it's going to come down to either you're clearly better and there's a there's a golf like indoor rowing you know everyone's times there's a golf you know you can pull that that distance and what Mm -hmm. you're capable of but actually can you execute it on the day in the moment under the pressure so I think for the top level of the sport, mental game is everything, you know, and and knowing when to exert, when to pull back, you know, what's the rest of the pack doing, reading the situation, knowing what you've got in you to adapt to a changing situation. And I think a lot of that is mental and using your head and knowing your abilities. And um, for the community level, I think it plays a part, but it's much smaller of a part. I think you need to be a certain type of... Um, mentally strong person to do this in the first place because you know you're putting your body into a hole you know yeah (laughs) yeah it's not it's not an easy hour and a half it's it's a suffer fest for that yeah 100 percent. and it's the same with a lot of sports right like a lot of like fitness-based sports no different to crossfit you know you're going to hurt for however long the workout's going to last Mm. and it takes a certain type of person that enjoys yeah that that type two type fun yeah yeah exactly yeah exactly um so to that extent yes and I do think there's an element of to a certain subject sub group of people of how hard can it be kind of mentality you know mm-hmm. if you can go in being like oh how hard is it really you know I've people I I had a conditioning workout yesterday with a client and it was written on the board as four rounds and I immediately looked at it when that's gonna be too easy and doubled it and she was like, what? <laughs> and and then we did it and it was fine. There was, it yeah. wasn't that bad at all. Like, yes, yeah. we suffered. Yes, it was a conditioning workout. And she te- she put it on the, the group, like our group chat from the gym afterwards. She's like, Laura just doubled it. And my <laughs> response is, yeah, but did you die? Like, yeah, yeah, exactly. Because that's where my head's at with it. Yeah, totally. And then sometimes it's like, so so when you're in in high rocks for, for your high rocks and the ones that you've done so you said about the burpees and you're just like hey oh, burpees or the running so how do you get yourself like how do you keep moving how do you not just go like for anyone that struggles or anyone that's maybe stood there for a bit too long and is thinking right I've got to get through this barrier like how do you do it how do you go like is it I kind of go the quicker I do this the quicker we finish <laughs> like that's kind of my thought process but what's yours what I'm one more one more, so just break one it down. more burpee. Then okay. I get down, I do it. One more burpee, and I get down and I do it. Okay. One more burpee, and like, like that's that would be my that's my <laughs> especially in the burpees that works with the running. I break it down. So if I'm coming around a corner, the goal is the next corner. And I'm coming around that corner, the goal is the next straight. You yeah. know, and I and I'll break and I do it when I drive in my car and I'm trying to get to a place. Like I break it down into <laughs> manageable chunks um, to overcome, like to to the work big long through. journey, yeah. Yeah, and I think that's the same with a lot of stuff that we do in in kind of fitness and and health like healthy eating, you know, focus on today, get through today, 
one day at a time. You know, we're not looking at this as this massive obstacle, this massive mountain to climb. Look at it in small achievable steps and just complete the step for where you are in any given day. Perfect. And actually, if you feel like you can't complete those steps, that's that's okay as well. Have a day where you can't, but then next day come back and go, I'm going to try my step today. Yeah, no, fair. Great, great advice. I think that's, I think like chunking it down, chunking anything down and not looking at the big picture. Because like high rocks can become quite overwhelming if you do the run ski and then on your next run, you're absolutely gassed and you're like, what am I doing? Yeah, I've yeah, I totally agree. One. Like it's quite good, like you said, just forget that, just focus on that run and just that lap that you're doing right then, just forget the rest of the race. And yeah, and I think that, that. And an element of pacing, if you've gone off heart, like give yourself give yourself a break on the next one, tone it down a little bit yeah. to what's achievable. You know, you don't have to be hot every single lap. Do you think the elites are going out full gas constantly? They yeah, might, no, but yeah. well, probably not. No, but yeah, they've definitely got a strategy, haven't they? Like, yeah, exactly. Yeah, it is. It's all about pacing for for that length of of time. Even for the elites, you know, they they're still going for like just under an hour like it's it's not over in 20 minutes is it it's a long long haul the really exciting thing about all of it is at that top level we've not even tapped into the potential that some of these athletes can have like mm. that's what's really terrifyingly exciting yeah it's yeah, so young you must, isn't it yeah see from from doing the presenting and actually witnessing it in the flesh like each time you must just see the the improvement of the sport like how it's growing and growing and and notice the changes like seeing it in I think the flesh must be super exciting honestly it's really cool and um I mean world records are one thing we're seeing world records go down and down and down and down but also you're seeing you're seeing like families you're seeing Lauren and Meg's Lauren Weeks and Megan Jacoby's oh, kids watching their unreal. mums yeah. break records like yeah. there was a really cute I think it was Lauren's little girl. Yeah, because, yeah, it would have been. And Lauren's little girl is watching all of the athletes cross the finish line and lie down dead, yeah. you know? And, and then, so she's down. there now lying on the finish line. Because oh, that's what so you do cute. when you cross the finish line. Like, <laughs> you know, that's what's really exciting is when you see those moments and you realise that little girl's going to grow up training like her mum. Oh, no, And doing it from be... a much younger age and hopefully falling in love with this sport and you know, it's going to be these younger generations that are going to really like drive this on. Like right now, we're just laying a kind of a casual benchmark. But mm. those that are, I mean, I'm in my, th most of and most of us are in our late 20s, early 30s in high rocks. Um, it'll be the guys who are like 18. Yeah. They're going to start setting and the girls, they're going to be on setting the new standards in a couple of years time. And I think it'll be like super interesting when you get to a point. I mean, now, because it's so early, people are breaking world records and like age group records, but it's going to get to a point where it gets like flatlined and people are like not breaking Working. these records so much. Yeah, yeah. And then, and then like once every like three years, someone's going to break a record. It's, it's going to be, like, be wild. Whoa. It's going to be, yeah, yeah. it's going to get to that point. Like when you go to the Olympics and someone smashes a world record, it's like huge because those records have stood for five yeah. 10 15 years and that like that's a really like exciting thought that high rocks is so early that you know in 15 years time it might be like these kids coming through that are just like unreal smashing these like, yeah yeah records that like yeah you know lauren weeks and um meg jacoby and stuff have set and um hunter like someone's gonna come <laughs> through and <laughs> make Hunter look like he was jogging around or something, aren't they? Like there's some 16 year old <laughs> that's training now in the gym that in like, you know, 10 years time is going to be rapid. Yeah, uh, I mean, you can, I really hope that that is where this sport is going and that, yeah. that it like it's around for a long enough period of time that we can see this come to fruition. Um, yeah. I know that's mm. their ambition. It's um, it's really exciting. I mean, it um, looks good from, from now, doesn't it? The foundations they've built so far, it's like- Yeah, it's been pretty- Pretty awesome. Amazing. Pretty chuffed to be on this ride with everybody. Yeah, absolutely. Um, okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna switch up to the controversial cheeky insight questions. Yeah, um, yeah I I actually didn't read this, so that's okay. This Brilliant. is gonna be well, fun. This makes it even the spot. more fun. Um, the first one is the question that seems to just be on everyone's mind. Um, what shoes do you wear to race high rocks? <laughs> um, you don't want to know. Oh. No, <laughs> no, 
no, my cons. <laughs> no, no, I wear pu- I wear the, I wear the Pumas now. But yeah, my first race was done in Metcons, as was my oh, half no, marathons no. and my ten k's. Oh my god, half marathons and yeah. Metcons. That How is, hard can I mean, it be, girls? How hard can it be? I think that's <laughs> actually quite impressive. But <laughs> how were your calves not dying? Oh dear. Okay, nothing, so nothing we- a stretch can't fix. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> I love that answer. That is so good. Um, no, I had okay. my last my my last two races were done in Pumas, but my and first was race that... was my first race was Metcons. And but would still... you recommend no. Pumas maybe to anyone listening? No, more? I like it. You know what? Because I only ever have worn Metcons or Nanos, or oh and I wear God. Metcons to run because they're slightly more sturdy, whereas the Nanos are a little bit flatter. Um, but... <laughs> But oh my god, I, I said it when I put them on. It's like it's like running on a cloud. Yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> it's so springy. Actually, <laughs> running flat foot right. every step. <laughs> oh, that oh is god. too good. Okay, it's okay. I'm, I'm a runner now. I'm a runner now. I have proper running shoes. Hundred percent, you are. <laughs> Next up, what venue is your favorite High Rocks venue, either for racing or presenting? Up to you. Yes, yeah, so it's probably a bit biased. So I probably haven't been to quite enough, but um, it would have been Manchester for World Championships last oh. year. That is, with the the way the light comes through the windows, where yeah. it is, that is a really spectacular venue. I know it's got quite a lot for racing. It's got quite a few corners and it's um quite a lot of laps. So it's harder to follow, but for the, um, sorry, that's my washing machine making a massive noise. Um, <laughs> but like for like the visual a- a- aesthetic, it it was really cool. Yeah, yeah, that was our favorite. To be fair, we raced um, Manchester last year, and uh, it was yeah. I think the atmosphere as well was electric. It was yeah, because really it's quite good. small, so everyone's like in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, was cool. it was a really, really cool place. Um, okay, <laughs> favorite High Rock station and why? I'm guessing it's not going to be Barry Broadjump. It's definitely not. That's definitely my worst in like, <laughs> like that's my worst in every lifetime. Um, my favorite is the ski erg because um, because I'm always ahead. I'm always in like, when I leave the ski erg, I've only done one kilometer of running and I can beast a ski erg. So yes. I'm always in the top like four or five. And then it goes swiftly downhill off a cliff. <laughs> I love That's... that. But the ski erg, I think like into that next run is is brutal. Your heart rate is like right up there. It depends on your ski, right? Like ski erg for me is such a staple. I use it every yeah. day, yeah. like yeah, every so, day. Yeah. Whereas I think by the time I get to the rower, I'm a bit too fatigued from the burpee broad jumps to like really pull a pace <laughs> that I would naturally pull. Yeah, I like, okay. I dropped down to about a two a two minute 500 split, which like, if I did that in CrossFit, I'd be a little bit ashamed of myself. But yeah, okay, fair, yeah. but yeah, it's a totally <laughs> but different By the time I get too. to it on high rocks, so I'm like, just survive. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Keep you're growing. probably like, <laughs> You're pretty lucky you uh you know the distance for the ski because it could have been a totally different answer then if uh, <laughs> if you'd have gone past the distance. So now we've sorted that all out and you know yeah the yeah now I know how ski. I'm, now I know what we're doing yeah <laughs> yeah it's your favourite station. Okay, next up, if you could do uh doubles high rocks with anyone in oh. the world, who would you choose? No, see, this is really interesting because I should have given this more thought because it's a great question. It doesn't have to be someone in the high rocks world. It could be. Oh no, no, that's anywhere. what I mean. I want it to be like someone, someone really cool. You, we can come back to it if you want to have a second to think about it. Yeah, come on, that could be the ending. Okay, come back and to that, it. and that... we're going to big it up real big, and it's going to be really like depressingly, <laughs> like boring and average. I'm just, I'm just going to walk to the crowd and find the nearest dude that's a world champ. So, you know? Hey, hey, it works. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> just... mate. I'm not, I'm not judging. I, I'm all for it. Um. Okay. Do you? fuel for high rocks and if so what fuel do you use and when do you take it during the race oh uh, you guys need to stop thinking i'm an athlete <laughs> no you are you've done high rocks we, we're talking on that okay we... i can take you through my fuel for every race <laughs> well i mean last time you didn't even eat before it did you? yeah so the I'm first guessing... race i drove from home to london in my car <laughs> i had a mcdonald's breakfast on the way <laughs> yeah that, that's all I, good and then I was in I was racing at 7 p.m and an hour before my race I had a black coffee and a flapjack and that's it that you had all day that's all I had yep oh man okay cool so like do not come to me for advice on <laughs> how to fuel appropriately for your high rocks um, but... I know how you should but <laughs> like it's not what I've ever done and then obviously Chicago was straight after a broadcast as was Vienna 
So I don't eat when I broadcast. It's like, I don't know. It's like, you're, you're always so like on, I find yeah. it very hard to switch off and sit down and eat. So I don't eat on broadcast days and then I run and then I have a really big meal after like a pizza. So I think what we should take from this is that you can still finish a high rocks without yeah, having, eating. yeah, without having any never appropriate eaten. nutrition, not just for racing, but for life. For li- Yeah. So <laughs> yeah. It's, it's a good, that is a good message to get out there. So that yeah. should not be an excuse that you, you know, don't have your race day fuel. If you haven't eaten, if you've worked all day, whatever it is, you can but still. Please, do please do have your race day fuel. I'm okay. an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love these questions. Okay. Oh, too good. Um, what is oh God, I've lost track. I can't even read that. <laughs> um, you put me off. What is your favorite training session for High Rocks? Like it doesn't have to be specific, more like it could be the format of something or like the style of like an EMOM or a, do you like a long run or like <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, I know what you're Anything? I don't know. <laughs> um right now we my um my husband does all of the programming for our gym and we have had a couple of really good kind of window workouts and oh. I really like window workouts where What's you have so where you'd like have two minute window to achieve this amount and then a max uh, effort yeah so Ooh. sometimes it can be done in intervals other times you can just be changing station but um I've really enjoyed that especially um obviously we did CrossFit so it's not quite high rocks training but we kind of you know it will, enc- it will encompass war balls it will encompass ski ergs it will encompass sled pulls like you know um but yeah I really like that style at the moment because a I think it pushes when you've got definitive end points it pushes you your maxes to an actual max whereas Mm -hmm. I find if you are like here's an open-ended time frame and you just go as hard as you like today Mm -hmm. you know you might not go as hard as you can yeah Yeah, totally oh Um, that's a good one yeah good answer but I thought it might be a little bit different yeah or I like um, it for time. Give me a big chunk of work to start to finish and I can just like get through. Smash it, yeah. Much like a high rocks race. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, okay, why should, I mean, we've probably kind of covered this already, but why should someone in a nutshell sign up for their first high rocks? Because it's fun. And yeah. you will test yourself and what you think you are capable of and you'll likely surprise yourself every step of the way. Yes, love that. And oh no, not finally, because we're going to come back to the doubles one, but um, oh. penultimate question. Mm-hmm. Um, who would you love to see on our podcast? But it doesn't have to be a specific person, but maybe like someone who's never done a high rocks or who's done a lot or like it could be anything or someone from a certain background or. So I, there's probably, there's two and I don't, I'm feel really bad because I don't know all of their names, but there's been there's two mother daughter combos that is racing at the moment one is linda meyer and linda meyer's mum and the other is judy foster and judy's mum okay awesome and i think the combination of a mother daughter podcast would be so lush or similarly david mcgeeder and his 71 year old dad because for me that yeah oh dream for me that is that's everything right you've got people who may or like most of them have done sport earlier in life but people who have potentially thought that there isn't a sport for them competing with their sons and daughters who have found love in in a sport like that entire dynamic is just amazing and yeah, obviously that's really cool. the more active you are into old age the longer people are going to live so the yeah, more we can encourage activity at older age then totally and especially for um women at as well I guess at this time you know a lot of people are saying like for as you get older to do more strength training so it's quite good for high rocks in that sense that it's got the strength training with the running some a lot of people maybe try and run a like half marathon or 10k as they get older as like their goal but maybe to involve the strengths quite good as well yeah amazing and I just I think it's it's true of CrossFit as well it's always I think they're the most inspiring athletes true of indoor rowing you're watching this the 80 plus indoor rowers it's the coolest thing in the world yeah incredible it is incredible okay so how my, din- do you my dinner date but not my dinner date my high rocks think, day think of your dinner doubles high rocks oh, day i wish i'd given this real thought oh, okay you, so there's a few that jump to mind <laughs> there's a few jumps to mind but i'm gonna have to decline the first is the one of the hemsworth brothers because they've just signed <laughs> their equipment deal and who doesn't yeah, want to run a doubles with a hemsworth brother fair yeah fair 
<laughs> They'd be my, pretty happy as well. They'd be pretty, my, my husband's literally there laughing to himself. <laughs> I mean, arguably, I don't because I'm really bad at burpees and running. Oh like, yeah, like, maybe, and I'll be bright red. Um, so maybe, maybe, could it be? I think there might be something fun in seeing a politician try it. Oh, I don't have a select politician, fair, yeah, but fair shout. good answer. But like, you know, we, we would Boris Johnson. Put your money where your mouth is, boys. You keep talking about the need to be healthier and fitter. What are you doing about it? Let's, yes. let's go run a high rock. Oh, my God. That would be hilarious. We need to have um, that happen. Oh, gosh. And I think oh. there's a great social media montage to be made if I ran it with my Cocker Spaniel. Oh, yeah. Amazing. Imagine <laughs> those mean, laps. She wouldn't Adam's be very gonna... useful, but she would enjoy Except it. the running. She would absolutely love it. Oh, yeah. She'd lo- yeah, yeah. She, she comes on my runs anyway when I do oh, run. Oh, amazing. <laughs> <We're never done. laughs> oh mate well thank you so much for your time today is there is there anything else you you want to say you want to add no not at all i've had great fun this has been a laugh and you guys are happy keep doing your thing you. can thank you instagram or like yeah. follow the gym or where can people yeah so you can find us at Vale do. crossfit um, we are obviously at Crossfit Box. Uh, you can find me at LS underscore sports. And please follow High Rocks World because that is where you get all the juicy content and the live streams. Um, secondly, ladies, if you find us one more, we've got a relay team. Oosh. Oh, true. Very true. Wait, we don't need one. We'll just, us three will turn it. We'll, we'll, we'll just find, we'll find an additional. One from the, yeah, Done. of course we will. Hey. So it it, isn't, that, isn't that how it works? <laughs> but wait, 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 wait. You're wait, a man. Wait. Uh, who's doing the burpee broad jumps here? Yeah, so not I me. <laughs> yeah, no. Fair so up. we need a female who likes burpee broad jumps. No, yeah, okay, that's, that's who we need that's to find. The, yeah. <laughs> okay, well, yeah, anyone that wants to join. Yeah, if you're listening, let us know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll sign up. We'll go to one of the London ones. We'll do it. Amazing. Yeah, that'll be so much fun. Let's do it. Oh, Helen, what about our mutual friend, Helen, that oh, puts oh, in touch? She, she loves a burpee. Epic. Yeah, she'd be great. <laughs> Helen's one of the best athletes I know. I know. She's incredible. I, I was in the Air Force with Helen and she just used to wipe the floor with everything I ever did. I thought I was quite good at sport till I met her. And then I was <laughs> like, God, who is this girl? <laughs> I like that's that was there you go. So I mean, this is not gonna mean anything else to anyone else who listens. But Helen was the reason I went to Wadapalooza, which is what got me the High Rocks job in the first place, because she was competing oh. and I was like, loose term, looking after her. I was, I was like her support system out there. No way. There you go. So actually, all of this is down to Helen. Well, I cheers, Helen. That's Put meant to be then. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. High I five, mean, without Helen. Even, without even knowing it, she's now in a relay team. Perfect. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'll inform her by text in a minute. Yeah, fair. <laughs> oh, well, thank oh. you so much for your time, mate. No, I really appreciate it. It's been fun. And thank in- you. See you guys next next time. Yeah, see you in London, probably. And thank you, everyone, for listening.